Muse Across the Galaxy presents The Midweek Show. I'm your host, Brian Lowell, and as always, here with me, my co-host, Edgar Zuniga. How you doing, sir? I'm doing okay, man. Uh, just really, uh, really curious about what the this weekend is going to bring for us, not just uh, for another chapter of El Tráfico, but because it, guess what? It's WrestleMania It's WrestleMania, season, baby. baby. Let's go. I've never been so excited to watch a WrestleMania like I have this one. And it feels like it's probably going to be the greatest WrestleMania of all time. But we'll see. Before we start the show, there is a big shout-out we need to do. A birthday shout-out to one Mr. Will Coons. Happy birthday, sir. Excuse me, uh, Brent. Do you acknowledge your tribal chef? I acknowledge my tribal chef. Yes, sir. <laughs> Happy birthday, sir. <laughs> Look, we're supposed to be giving this man gifts on his birthday, but it seems like he's been giving us constant gifts. And today, well, not today, maybe yesterday. Was it yesterday? The LA Galaxy has signed a new player. Uh, Edgar Zunica, could you? Oh, yes. Um, LA Galaxy. Sorry, I just want to look it up. I, like I tweeted earlier uh, this week, uh, Alec Galaxy was trying to find uh, somebody to um, to fill the role by uh, uh, Martin Cáceres, who picked up an injury in the game against Seattle. So uh, the front office, I don't know if they are already looking for somebody, just in case uh, Jalen Neal's uh, timeline to get back was going to be a, a little longer, but good on them that they were able to jump on this right away. Um Galaxy acquired a 22-year-old center back, uh, Carlos Garces, from Deportivo Pereira on a loan that's going to be lasting throughout the rest of the season. Uh, it's fantastic. We'll, we are going to have more details and also probably know exactly when he's going to be in town so people can go and say hi to him at the airport, give him a good Galaxy welcome on Sunday show. But for now, just uh know that the front office did something fantastic. So on his birthday, uh, our tribal chef is giving us wonderful presents. Yes, and what did they like? Because we are very thin at that position. I know we've been poking fun at one, you know, our center backs, uh, in particular one, Eric Zavaleta. But uh, for me, this seems like a great signing, not just for now. Maybe if he does show out this season, uh, we'll be able to keep him longer. And we'll have a young uh, center back pairing with Jalen Neal if it comes back. Speaking of Jalen Neal, there was a Jalen Neal sighting at practice. Great to see. Um, I know we've been very vocal on this on this show that we're very big fans of this young man. And he is a missing piece of what this LA Galaxy team could look when they're at full power. Uh, unfortunate that he had that injury. But um, it's great to see him back. Uh, what do you think, Edgar? Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I keep saying that uh, I don't feel like Alec Galaxy is back yet until we have a healthy Jalen Neal back on the field. I feel like he's a, such an important part of the future of this club or for as long as he wants to be here because I definitely feel his future will take him to Europe. But for now, enjoy, you know, what we have with him. Uh, but he's still like three, maybe four weeks away from uh, really uh, seeing some action. But the good news is that he's already practicing and we're going to be seeing him in a Galaxy uniform soon. So stay tuned. Yeah. Um, it has been a very exciting moment to see this. Uh, we'll also talk about what this could this new signing can mean for Jalen, or maybe not, or maybe it's just something that we could add on to the roster and, you know, we'll be even better than ever. All right. Let's get to the, to the main course, to the meat. The nitty gritty, right? To the meat of this uh, fine dining uh, event. In another El Tráfico edition. This one feels different. Um, particular from our side seeing that we've been undefeated and the LA Galaxy seems to have an identity of some sorts and on the contrary the other team is struggling and not just struggling uh, kind of struggling bad and you would think a team of that caliber with the players they have 
that they wouldn't be as bad. But things happen, and you know, trends tend to switch. The, these two teams have faced off twenty one times in twenty one games. The LA Galaxy is nine, seven, and five, and these two teams have had. Let me check that again. Yes, that is ninety one goals between the two. 46 for the LA Galaxy and 45 for LAFC. Edgar, this is a big match coming up. The streak is on the line against a very, very hostile rival and in the environment of a very hostile environment. What do you make of this? Yeah, this one definitely feels very strange. It feels different. And it, the feeling is mutual if you talk to uh, LAFC fans. And I know some of you out there, you know, you have friends or family or you know LAFC fans. You've seen them, uh, the, the banter uh, throughout the week. There's just a different feel about this game. I mean, there's the usual back and forth between fans, you know, Carson, 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 the, you know, you know LA, you know, is the entire county, blah, 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 and all that good stuff, which is, mm-hmm. you know, it's all fun. But there's just something about this one that feels different. And it has to do a lot with the fact that LA Galaxy is in a position they haven't been in in a long time. Meanwhile, uh, things at LAFC have not started the way that they would have wanted. And um, we wanted to know exactly why that is. We wanted to find out what's really going on with LAFC. Now, although LAFC is, you know, in our vicinity, we're not an LAFC pod and we don't cover them. So uh, we went ahead and reached out to people that do cover the team that uh, know what's really going on. They're, they're there covering the team on a regular basis. And we asked them several questions so they could shed some light on this edition of El Trafico. And you'd be shocked at some of the answers because um, it's one thing to go into a game uh, saying, yeah, we're going we're gonna to win because who goes into a game expecting to lose, right? You want to win. But when you start looking at what's going on behind the scenes, then you start to realize that there's a lot more going on there. Yeah. And uh, one of the first questions that, you know, we were able to ask them uh, was about their injury report. Um, this is what they had to say. Our back line is where LA- LAFC is dealing with injuries. Italian international Lorenzo De La Valle, De La Valle, De, De La Valle, De La Valle is out for the season, and new Mexican wingback Omar Campos is questionable. Because of that, LAFC has no room for cards or injuries, with only one or two subs available. On top of that, David Martinez, LAFC's Vanderkid, Wonderkid, did I do it right? You did it right. All right, thank you. 18-year-old from Colombia, got a red card against Colorado. I actually saw that. That was a very dumb red to get, to be honest. And he just got <laughs> subbed in, too. Yeah. Uh, and we'll be missing uh, this match. So that's their injury report. Um, damn. <laughs> I wish they could probably, they would have been here to expand on that. But that favors the LA Galaxy, who are very hot on the offensive side. And we might be able to see you know, the hot one of the hottest strikers in MLS and Dejan Jovalich come in and take advantage of that. Yeah, hopefully Jovalich is uh hopefully his growing injury has uh gotten better. Uh I did find it surprising that he did come into the second half of this last game against Seattle because when you are dealing with a groin injury, it's something that's kind of delicate. Uh, because you don't know what could set it off, especially if it, you know, he picked up this knock in the game against Sporting Kansas City. You want to be careful. So hopefully he's gotten well enough that he can start this game. If not, <laughs> we got to look at superstar Miguel Berry starting up top again, which uh, some people are just shaking their heads. But against this LAFC defense, who knows? Uh, like we said, things have been uh, things are a little different. Um, if you look at standings, it, LAFC is in a position where a lot of us are not used to seeing them. Um, 
I know a lot of people have been waiting for the day for the, you know, for their fortunes to finally turn and for them to start heading down to the, the lower parts of the standing. But just like seeing Seattle down at the bottom of the West, seeing LAFC, you know, right there with them, it's kind of strange, right? Especially because these, these are teams that we are accustomed to seeing fighting for Western Conference championships or even MLS Cups. So uh, the question is, like, what's going on with LAFC? So that's one of the questions that we ask, like, what's been hampering LAFC this season? And we got several uh, answers, but pretty much this is this is what we, what we got. There's an overall lack of creativity that mainly revolves around LAFC's inability to do much with possession. It's possible that some of this is because LAFC is still missing Carlos Vela's stability and distribution intelligence. On top of that, uh, teams across MLS understand that LAFC currently only have Dennis Boanga as a scoring threat and are double and triple teaming him. And while they do that, LAFC's midfield and false nine, Mateusz Bogus, have been unable to take advantage of whatever opportunities they get. For LAFC fans, it's been a deeply frustrating uh, time to watch, and it's maybe the worst they've ever looked at as a club. Um, furthermore, LAFC has no real striker and they got rid of some of their core players in Chicho Arango, Jose Cifuentes, Diego Palacios, and others who were the backbone of that team. However, uh, the new players that they have are having a very difficult time trying to find an identity for their club. So it's a multi-layered answer. Uh, there are a lot of like, small issues here. And on top of that, like, like we said earlier, the defense is hurting. So there's a lot of things working against LAFC. Um, and then also, um, you got to look at, they got somebody different in the back line with Hugo Loris. So mm -hmm. what can you say about that, Bryant? Uh, I think for me, the biggest miss and on their end is a Carlos Vela. Uh, I know well, it's, it's in the proof right now that they don't look as fluid on their attack as they did when they had them on the pitch and missing a big piece like that. I mean, it is going to hinder you a lot. You did have the, I think Boanga was the uh, golden boot winner last season or was it the season before? It was the season. Um, we can look it up real quick, but either way that, uh, you know, he could put him in back of the net, but the reason he was putting them in back of the net is because you had a threat like Carlos Vela on the, on the other end um, coming at you as well. Um, they might have upgraded in the goalkeeper yep. with uh, Dennis Boanga. If though he was, so they did upgrade in keeper. But if you're gonna keep getting shot at with a weak defense, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, it, they're coming in with injuries on the defense. Yoris is not gonna get much help, and if Jovic could get somehow just going in those first ten minutes where he's not maybe not scoring, but just attacking and, and getting close and knocking on the door, I think one, I think one goal could just open the floodgates. This is just yeah. before we actually... Because I don't really believe we're going to beat them by that much, to be honest. And <laughs> I know we discussed this earlier, but I'm going to just say it now. It's a trap game. Another one. Uh, last week, LAFC lost against a Colorado team who seemed to have kind of emerged a little bit. And maybe gotten out of that... Uh, that rut that they had. Um, so them losing away in a close match, of course they want to come back home and ruin the day for their cross town rivals, uh, especially in front of their home fans who are going to be in there, you know, being ranked bushes as ever. It's going to be, yeah. a, you know, it's going to be one of those. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, like I said, one of the biggest additions that, that they made this year which is kind of strange, right? Because uh, you would think uh, you want to bring in uh, young young players into the league. But no, they went ahead and they, they splashed on uh, Hugo Lloris from France, who's 37 years old. Now, if for a field player, that's you know quite an elevated age. And usually goalkeepers you know, go a, a little longer, but he's still 37, right? So he's kind of pushing it there. He's almost to the end of his career. And we did ask him... Um, we did ask, uh, you know, them if Hugo Lloris has worked out for LAFC. And, uh, Ryan, what did they say? Give me a little bit. Mm. 
when uh, you asked them, right? Uh, has yes. Yoris worked out for them? Not everyone agrees, but he's been incredibly steady. He looked terrible against Colorado, but outside of that game, his age hasn't really been an issue. His distribution is great, and he always reads the game perfectly. But it is true that he is slower. Colorado was his worst game so far. So it's it's kind of interesting, right? Because this guy has quite a pedigree, right? Um, yeah. Playing for France, uh, for Tottenham, Lyon, for Nice, and now he's here with LAFC. He's represented France at the highest levels. And there he is on the Figaro and King, right? And um, <laughs> highest level, baby. <laughs> yeah. And so you're like, all right, you know, I, I, yeah, I was curious to see how he, he was going to do for LAFC, but uh, I guess, it, you know, he's had a pretty well start with them. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Galaxy does well, uh, does against them because we saw uh, against a quality goalkeeper like Berkey, uh, Galaxy wasn't able to really get the ball past him. So maybe if Lodis can pull together a performance on that level, uh, it'll be going to make it difficult and frustrating for the LA Galaxy forwards. Um, especially if uh, Jovelich is playing, and, I mean, Jovelich, I'm sorry. Jovelich, if Jovelich yeah. is playing. And we've been discussing that the season about how he, how important it is for him to develop a good uh, sense of self-esteem, right? Because his confidence has been up and down so much. And it seems like he's trending in the right direction. So hopefully he doesn't get too frustrated uh, if Loris is, uh, he decides to stand up and have a really good game in El Tráfico. Um, what do you think, uh, Brian? You think Loris can uh, step up or you think he's going to uh, melt under the lights? <laughs> I, The point you made about Berkey is, is legit. Uh, we had a tough time scoring on him. And I know in that match, Jovic could have had two goals, three goals, whatever it was. But People got to remember that that goalie is the goalkeeper of the year. 2023, he was outstanding. And so if Yoris even has a glimpse of what he can really do, and I think it probably will show up in this match, particularly because it's a rivalry game. It's a derby. It's El Trafico. He's, he knows the hype behind it. You want to play your best in these type of matches. And seeing how his defense is depleted and he is literally the last line of defense. Uh, it it could be one of those games where Yobel is just going to get frustrated. So, I mean, we'll see though. <laughs> I'm, I'm really hyped for this game, to be honest. It's going to be one of those... We keep saying this week in and week out. The next one is going to be the test for the LA Galaxy. The next one's going to be the <laughs> test for the LA Galaxy. The next one's going to be the... Now, this might be... <laughs> the biggest test so far for the LA Galaxy. Uh, you have yeah. the unde undefeated streak, and then you're playing away in a match that's always intense. And, it, you know, it's big for everybody in LA. Yeah. Uh, I mean, LA Galaxy uh, have only defeated LAFC twice at, at BMO. And one time it was it, – I probably doesn't even count because it was in the Open Cup against, you know, the LAFC's uh, backup, backup, backup squad. Yeah. And uh, Galaxy went out there with the, you know, the, the, the full senior squad and they won. But eh, it's not the same as beating, you know, the best, the best guys on the, on the team. Well, LAFC might not be at, uh, you know, at, at their best right now. But you know that players at, at this level of football are going to step up for a big derby, especially in Tráfico with the, the history that we had. Every game has been... Uh, crazy i mean you can go back and look at every single game and there's been a lot of drama so we've been seeing a lot of the banter on twitter going back and forth on social media people just go <laughs> they go buck wild man it's, it's hilarious insane. i love it it's hilarious yeah <laughs> and it goes both ways right it's, it's just funny um i mean if, if you can if you can take a step back and look at everything with a sense of humor you, there's a lot of funny stuff going on right uh hopefully people don't take a lot of the stuff too seriously because the funny thing is that there's a lot of us that are cheer for Galaxy. There's some of us that cheer for LAFC, but in the end, we're all Dodgers fans. Unless you cheer for those, that team, <laughs> yeah. that team down the road, you know, in Orange County. But um, it just reminds, reminds me of the story. I went, I went to like the the, the very first the Trafico at BMO Stadium, or when it was called the Stank, and uh, 
That was called the, you know, the BO Stadium. I don't know. Anyway, oh, the we BO went, Stadium. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> so, uh, Galaxy came, you know, came back to tie that game. I remember, like afterwards, uh, we, I was there with the fans that were bust out to the game. And afterwards, we're like, we're being escorted back to the bus, and I was on. I hear the screaming, and this guy comes running up. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know who this guy is, right? And then I'm wearing my a Galaxy jersey and a, a Dodgers hat. And then, like, literally, like, a second letter, he's like, hey, uh, can the Dodgers win? I'm like, yeah, they won. He's like, ah, let's go Dodgers. I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. But anyway, um, we you know, we all know, like, everybody really gets pumped up for this game. But, like we said, things are a little bit different this time. Yeah. So one of the questions that we asked was, was what is the feeling around uh, the LAFC fan base heading into this match versus an undefeated LA Galaxy? Check this out. It says, for the first time in LAFC's history, uh, a lot of LAFC fans are viewing themselves as underdogs. If LAFC cannot beat Colorado Rapids, how are they going to beat a resurgent Galaxy? There is a sense of nervousness because LAFC fans know that Galaxy tend to show up for Traficos. And this is maybe the first time that LAFC fans, in general, are expecting a win. LAFC haven't played well enough yet for fans to believe in the team. Wow. What do you think about that, Brian? Uh, I could kind of attest to that. I have, you mentioned it earlier, we all have friends that are, they root for the team across the highway. Um, and of course, every time we play each other, there's always banter. There's always, you know, the back and forths, the memes start flying in the group chats. And it's always great. It's always, um, it's fun and it's in good taste. And I mean, we we talk a lot of mess about each other's teams and, and get into it really right. This time around, though, there was no memes. There was no, hey, Carson. We're going to beat you this time. No, 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 no. There was no fuck the galaxy. No, no. There was none of that. The group chat has been silent. The only one that has been sending memes is me and the homie Aww, Diego. Shout, shout out to Diego. <laughs> Since we're the only L- uh, Galaxy fans in there, the rest are LAFC fans. And so what that tells me is that exactly what he confirmed. Um, they're nervous. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to show up to that stadium. I think because of that nervousness, they're going to want to try to show out even louder than they usually do. It's going to be one of those matches where it could go down as another great El Trafico. And I'm all for it. They, I don't think any of them have really disappointed. Except for maybe the one during um, the vid <laughs> uh, in 2020, 2019, the, those uh, lost years. Um, but aside from that, I mean, they've all been pretty much bangers, and that's enjoyable to watch. So one of the questions that we always ask uh, guests on our show uh, who are podcasters from the other team is, what is it going to take for LA Galaxy to defeat their team? So that was one of the questions that we asked. And uh, Brian, can you care to read that one? Ah. Uh. Well, I mean, we know what we could do. Um, Everything is going to have to run through the middle with Brugman, Delgado, and Puj. And I know we've kind of gave, well, I myself gave Ricky Puj a couple of Game of Soft awards. But it seems the last two matches, he's been stepping it up. And he's been, he's been more trusting of his teammates uh, when it comes to the offensive side of everything. Of course, Brugman coming in, uh, it goes without saying that he's a big difference and he's such a step up from what Serio does. Not a knock on Serio because Serio is wonderful at what he does. We can tell the difference. And then with Mark, to me, he's the early MVP of the LA Galaxy. He might not have the goals that Jovalic has, but the impact that he has on the pitch when he's in there. And it's... Did not expect this, Mark Delgado, if I'm being honest. We know he's always been a center, center mid. But right now, he's kind of carrying the team on his back, so to speak, because he is on the right in the center. Um, So it's going to have to run through them. What they have to say is, 
if you eliminate LAFC's passing lanes in transition and take advantage of the age of the back line, that's one. It, yeah, it's going to make it difficult for uh, LAFC because, um, like he was saying, they're already thin at the back. Yeah, and you know some of you know, and then you 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 take into account Lodisa's age; he's thirty seven, and uh, Galaxy just have a shooting gallery back there. Damn, they're but, gonna have to face a hot paint cell, a hot Jovalich, and a emerging Gabriel Peck, who just scored his first goal last week. Knowing that yeah. this is a rivalry, I mean, he's lived rivalries; they're different in Brazil. But, I mean, he knows what rivalries mean. Uh, it, it could be trouble for them. He also says, if Galaxy can stop Bowanga from hitting his top speed on the transition, LAFC don't really have other goal scorers on the team. On the defensive side, LAFC has been shaky at best and had only one clean sheet all season. If Galaxy controls the game, LAFC will be in trouble. That plays into right what the LA Galaxy does Cont takes control, takes possession and executes from there. Uh, strangely enough, that's always been the identity of the slot of the style of play with Greg Vanny. It's just this season for some reason, maybe it's the wingers that birthday boy brought us. Um, it's been working and they're in trouble. So we think, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're, we're finally getting to see Vanny's vision, to be yeah. honest, uh, because, you know, we have an actual general manager in charge, somebody who knows what he's doing. And we saw how he built those LAFC teams that were title contenders. You know, they have fantastic players. And now you can see what this team is, is looking like once all those guys left. I mean, by the way, isn't it really weird? That Carlos Vela is just in limbo. Yeah. We had heard he was we had heard he was gonna be heading to San Jose. And then apparently LAFC was making a counter, you know, like argument or whatever. I mean, like a counter offer. And then it just kind of just faded away. And where is Vela? It's what it's it's funny. I don't want to digress, but it's one of the things that I've always wondered about. And we've always heard rumors about, or I don't know if it's rumors, maybe it's it's, it's all grounded in truth, but we've heard that. His heart really isn't in the game. Yeah, he's a talented player, obviously, but we heard we've heard rumors that he really doesn't have his heart in the game like uh, some athletes do, and maybe this is uh, showing its face in this in this manner where he has an opportunity to either play for San Jose or LFC or maybe some other MLS team, and he's just kind of sitting back and not really doing much. So, but they're they're obviously missing him because yeah. Uh, yeah, Dennis Bonga by himself. He can't carry that team for too long. And what a boneheaded move. I'm sorry to say, but man, what a boneheaded move to give it to Chicho Arango because he is with RSL and he is cooking right now. Yeah, I think that was one of the biggest question marks that they probably had to face. Why wouldn't you bring this man back? Uh, good for <laughs> us, right? Because he was yeah. the one that actually eliminated us on in a playoff match, correct? Yes. Um. And in that year, two years ago, right? Uh, he was killing it, and he's still killing it. Uh, RSL is at you know near the top of the table, so yeah. That what a boneheaded move. Um, the whole metal thing, like you said, it is strange. Does he want to try other sports, or is it just <laughs> because he's a big NBA fan? Uh, Bella, not to say for the yeah, NBA. <laughs> not to say that he's gonna go play in the NBA, but why not try his skills in the Mexican league, right, or something mm -hmm. like that? Um, unfortunate for them as as a fan base, but ha ha. That's <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I really gotta say. I mean, it is what it is with Bella. Uh, they're gonna have to show up with the team that they have right now, and if Dennis Bonga can carry them on their back, well, like I like I mentioned earlier. Trap game, trap game, trap game, trap game. Well, we do have uh, we do have some questions that uh, we received, and uh, let's start with one of the first ones. Um, Alex, good friend Ziggy, yes, he asks, How do we think J Mac is going to handle the pressure of going back to his old home? Now, 
we have seen former LAFC players that went to play for Galaxy make their return uh, to, you know, their stadium. And the latest one that we could really point to was Raheem um, Edwards. Raheem Edwards. And he, he, I feel like he really tr- took it to like a different level. And it, sometimes it worked for him. But overall, I feel like he was trying a little too hard to <laughs> do, you know, stuff against his former team and against, you know, to show up against the fans. And it kind of hurt the Galaxy. Uh, a goalkeeper, it's a little bit different, right? You know, it's not like you're out in the field trying to pass the ball around or trying to create a offense. But I wonder if, He's going to be hearing it from either the 3252 or from just other LAFC fans on the other end of the field, and if they're going to get under his skin. But it doesn't seem like that uh, with him. It seems like he's a pretty serious guy, and um, I don't think he's going to be bothered too much by this. What do you think, Brian? Um, I don't think so. Like you mentioned, Raheem Edwards was one of those players that used to play over there, came here, gave it his all. My thing would be, would their fan base boo J-Mac at the stadium? Because remember, he did win them a trophy or won a trophy with them. And so do you boo an ex-player who has won a trophy with your team? I think they are. (laughs) Uh, I mean, would it? Okay, if it was the other way around, would we boo somebody like that? Yeah, it depends. Galaxy fans are different. And I'll give you an example. Um, the, whenever uh, Galaxy players like uh, Giasi Sardis, um, you know, come back to the dig, they always get a, you know, a nice warm ovation uh, from the fans because we remember those good times. Uh, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, fan, you know, players that are returning uh, to the dig and they're in warm-ups you know, fans will start chanting their name and then they'll wave at the crowd and, you know, they get a nice warm reception. Um, so it'll be interesting. I, I know I mean, one good example, I think, that we could maybe bring up is Alan Gordon started, his, you know, started um, at one point he was with the LA Galaxy, right? And then he went to San Jose where he terrorized the LA Galaxy, you know, yeah. for quite a while. <laughs> but then eventually he came back over here and I feel like he had some of his better seasons with the Galaxy. And whenever he went back to San Jose, those fans, they didn't like it. <laughs> so maybe if we could use that as an example, maybe uh, the fans will boo him. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's more of a question of what have you done for me lately? And, you know, you know he's playing for, you know, the hated rivals. So I, yeah. I think that we're going to hear some boo birds. That's fine. That's our goalie now. All right. You leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. Did you want to do the ghost one? I'm I'm on. I'm going to ask it. Gudino right. Art, a... it's a tough one. Yeah, he yeah, asked us. Really look back, man. Top five goals versus LAFC aside from the Slatan's debut. Damn, um, I can think of some of the top of my head. Uh, I think definitely the the two we saw last year in the Rose Bowl game. Yep, those were especially the one by Tyler Boyd. Man, <laughs> go lasso, go lasso. Uh, those. So that's a uh, that's two examples right there. Um, obviously, uh, the one that uh, Zlatan scored, I think it was 2022, I want to say it, it was at, um, yeah, it was at the dig, and it was the one if you remember, uh, no, it wasn't 22, I'm sorry, he was already gone at that point, it was in 2021, it was the first uh, Trafico of the season, May 8th, and it was the one where he, um, was it the Julian Araujo that gave him the pass? And then he kind of did like a little sombrerito over two LAFC players. And then he... You know what? I apologize. We tracked that statement. He wasn't here in 2021 because he, nah. he was gone. He was long gone. Yeah. It was in 2019. And it was the one where he did that little sombrerito. Mm-hmm. And before the ball hit the ground, he hit it with the same foot. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, uh, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so there, Another one where uh, he scored and then he ended up pushing Latif Blessing. And there was that <laughs> meme created, <laughs> of course. Yeah. But the, that the one, one that we just mentioned, though, the 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 one where he scored uh, for the goal early in the game, it wasn't just the goal; it was just the fantastic tomberito. It was his 
goal celebration where he like ran down the field to the LAFC bench and started roaring at Bob Bradley. And that's something a lot of us can't forget. Oh yeah. Uh, Those are beautiful. And also uh, another one that I really liked that I remembered uh, is the one that uh, Jonah scored uh, against uh, LAFC. It was his last goal against LAFC. And it was a goal where the game was tied. It was in the 79th minute. And Jonah, he was kind of like, you didn't even see him until the last bit of that play where Chicharito had the ball near the sixth. And he saw Jonah kind of hovering at the top of the box. And then Jonah started making his run and Chicharito passed it to him. So Jonah could just slam it in past the goalkeeper. And then he's, he ran to the corner, took off his shirt, and started celebrating. Uh, good times, man. As, as if I, Whenever I remember Jonah Los Santos, that's one of the memories that I have the most of him. So, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that definitely wants a G, always a G. Yeah, definitely. And if, um, to everybody watching this later on on YouTube, uh, leave a comment. Which one was your favorite goal in this all time El Trafico matchup. All right. Uh, one last question from, well, actually, I have two. From Cisco, do you think their counterattack style could be harmful to our style of attack? Mm. Seeing how they're, how depleted they are right now, uh, I don't yeah. think so. It, it, if, if they were at full strength with a player like Carlos Vela, and of course, maybe even a, Giroud, who has been rumored to LAFC, um, it'd be different. But how they are coming in into this match, according to the information that we have, it doesn't seem like anything of that sort could happen. Yeah. Later on, this... I will lay, I will lay, I will trip you out on the um on the betting odds. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and this this is where this is the true definition of a trap game right here because all signs point towards a galaxy victory or at least at the very 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 least a draw but no way should galaxy lose this game right no way and uh, even LAFC fans are you know shaking their heads expecting the worst for their club so this is this is a trap game like we said uh this derby has given us a lot of twists and turns a lot of surprises and I feel like this is a really good test for LA Galaxy because uh, they're coming off that that win over Seattle in, in difficult conditions. And now they're facing, they went from uh, a team that has tormented them in the past uh, with Schmetzer uh, in control. And now they're playing against, you know, their, their eternal rival at LAFC. And uh, it's an opportunity for Galaxy to take a further step into solidifying uh, that they really are back, but what better chance to ruin that for your hated rivals than to beat them at home in front of your fans who are hungry for something, for anything, to give them a sense of hope that not all is lost. And this is the kind of game where it could define your season. Even this early on, right? I mean, we always say points matter, whether it's the beginning of the season or it's at the end. We're, we're already heading towards the end of the first third of the season. And a victory like this would go a long way into giving LAFC fans some hope. And a loss like this would be like a sucker punch for LA Galaxy. It's like a gut punch almost, right? Where it feels like, you know, that's it. You know, this is our, this is our time to shine. And all of a sudden, boom, you're on the ground. And you're like, what the hell happened? What the hell happened? You know, did you get the license plate of that truck? <laughs> and it takes a while for you to recover. Yeah. Um, so do I think it's going to be a blowout? No, it's not. I, I think that um, whatever the result's going to be, I think it's going to be a very tightly contested game. Uh, I think that LAFC is not going to give up some easy goals and uh, it's going to make it, they're going to make it as difficult as possible for LA Galaxy to get anything going, especially because we're starting to see that teams are developed a blueprint to slowing down paint seal. But, and this is where it's important for Gabriel Peck to establish himself on the other side of the field and, and show them that he, he is also a threat and that will open things up and maybe a paint seal can exploit those spaces and maybe Jovalich or whoever's going to be at top can also do that. So is it important for Gabriel Peck to step up? Yes. Um, I expect uh, Peck to have a, a big game because 
he's used to those real toasty, cozy uh, rivalry games down in Brazil. So what do you think, Brian? You think Peck is ready for this? Yeah, 100%. He should be. But I want to backtrack into something you said about Penso. I'm not sure if MLS has figured him out yet. I think because of the conditions of the pitch that were horrible last weekend, uh, he didn't look as good as he's been looking. Now that he's going to get to play a depleted defense uh, with LAFC, I mean, it could be one of those where he takes advantage. Uh, with Peck, you are 100% right. It's, as long as he's shining, the other side where paints are is going to be even more dangerous. So it's you got to pick your poison at, at that moment. Uh, and then on top of that, you have Dejan Jovulic, who was hungry. Uh, I mentioned this before about having a three-headed monster. Look what we have. <laughs> we have the blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it's, it's going to be very hard for them to to try to slow us down. Which is funny that you went on off all night uh on that rant there because the next question from Rez and a shout out uh, Esquadron FC. We played them all. Let's go. Um he asked, who has more to risk on the weekend? If we win, how does that make us look versus a team that looks like their best days are behind them? But if we lose, what does it say about them? And so you mentioned about their fan base wanted to see something something positive in, in what seems like a gloomy season for them, right? Um, yeah. And that question right there is valid. Uh, who does have more to lose? We know what we have on the line. We have the streak on the line. Uh, and a rivalry like this, whether we wanted to admit it from the beginning or not, this is a big game. And now that the LA Galaxy is good, uh, we want to see them continue to be good. And especially in this type of match where not only do you want to continue your undefeated streak, but you want to send a message to the league. Like, hey, we're here. And like Painsville said, we want to murder every team. We want to kill them. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, like I said, I still find it hard to believe that uh, a team that we're so accustomed to seeing uh, at such high levels like Seattle is down so low. Uh, we got a, an understanding of why that is the case when we spoke to Cheyenne from uh, from uh, Rave Green TV. And now we're kind of getting an idea of why LFC is off to a bad start. But I uh, don't think that that's going to last for very long because uh, LAFC is trying really hard to uh, bring Oliver Giroud over to the club. Uh, it's been a rumor for a while. And now apparently they have the the magical discovery rights that we've heard about <laughs> the discovery rights that have Ronaldo going to SKC. Right. What is that dude? I've never understood like, Oh, I see a player. So I claim him. <laughs> it's like monopoly money or like, it's like, uh, you know, it's like the community chess card or something. Right. It's like Tom Boger. Uh, he said that Giroud will be available after the euros which will probably be sometime in July, depending on how France far goes. But all point, I mean, all signs point to, yes, Giroud will join LAFC. And at which point, my God, uh, if they can figure out a way to, to distribute the ball to him, that dude is going to feast on MLS defenders. Uh, I'm not saying maybe not at the level of Zlatan, but my God, this guy is going to annihilate people. So uh, whatever L Galaxy is going to do against them, I better do it now because when that guy comes, it's going to make it a lot more difficult. So yeah. this is an opportunity to, you know, to knock LASC down a little bit lower, but don't expect them to be down there for too long. I think that yeah, they're, uh, they're eventually going to bounce back. And like I said, what if this is the game where they bounce back? I don't know. Yeah. Um, do we have predictions, Bryant? This Before we do predictions, one. let me give you some betting odds. Okay. So DraftKings has this game with three goals expected. They have LAFC at minus 145, which means that they think LAFC is going to win. The draw at plus 330, and the LA Galaxy at plus 300. Google has the win probabilities. LAFC with 59, 56%, 59, fuck, I need glasses. <laughs> Damn. The draw at 22% and the LA Galaxy with a 22% chance 
of winning and keeping their undefeated streak at B.O. Field. Yes, that is <laughs> B.O. Field. <sighs> Edgar, with that information, I know you asked me for predictions, but I wanted to give you the uh, what the experts think. Um, how do you go in this, and what are what are the end results of this match? All right. Well, I'm the one who's been saying all along that I think this is a trap game. And for me to go back and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to predict the Galaxy victory would go completely about against everything I've been saying so far. So I'm just going to stick to my guns. I, I think that uh, Galaxy uh, will finally have their streak come to an end. I think uh, it, LAFC is going to frustrate LA Galaxy. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh a lot of times you, you you learn a lot more from losing than from winning. And I think that at this uh, at this stage of the season, Galaxy has been able to get by because a lot of the teams that they played against have had to deal with extenuating circumstances, whether it be uh, key players that are missing or scheduling conflicts that have affected the, the level of their opponents. So... Yeah, LAFC looks like they're down, but I, I've always told people you never underestimate uh, an, an animal that's wounded and trapped in the corner because it will snap back at you and bite you and hurt you. Uh, I think uh, Galaxy will end up losing this game 2-1. to one. Uh, It's going to be really frustrating for, for Galaxy fans, but uh, it, it'll be some lessons that can be applied and so that the next time they play, they play each other, which will be at the Rose Bowl, and there's going to be a lot more at stake, and I think that'll be a, another fantastic game. Uh, what do you think, uh, Brent? What is your no feelings or no facts, all feelings prediction, though? <laughs> Fly zero galaxy. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. You're, you're, okay. Well, okay. Well, in that case, I'll say, all right, no facts, all feelings. Galaxy wins three to one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had the LA Galaxy winning 10 0 with that. Um, Damn. With that premise of yeah, all feelings, no facts, baby. 10 0. Zabaleta with a hat trick, baby. Yeah. Zabaleta with a hat trick. Yeah. All right. Now, let me make a an actual prediction with actual thoughts behind it. Um, I want to agree with you, but I don't know. I know something has to give because the other galaxy has. A certain streak, and not just the Galaxy. It just when it happens to sports, it kind of just plays out this way, where the script kind of goes in this direction. And you mentioned earlier that when you do lose, you know, you kind of build character from that. I know the Galaxy, uh, the players are not gonna want to lose this game at all. They're gonna come out firing on all cylinders. But we also gotta remember that the other team that's playing across town, you know, they're. This is a rivalry for them, too. Uh, and we've been down as well. We've been down where their team was way better than ours. They came to our house and they expected to win because they were doing so well. And our team that's been bad at those moments when we were bad, uh, we were able to, cut, you know, beat this team. And nobody really uh, predicted those type of wins against a really good LAFC team. Um, so, yeah, trap gain 100%. Should I do the heart thing or the brain thing? Do both. You asked me to do that. <laughs> the brain is agreeing with you 100%. Uh, my heart that doesn't want to be broken because <laughs> I don't want to hear the banter after. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a draw, to be honest. But it does feel like a trap game. And that 2-1-L, it, it seems... Like it's peeking its weird, stupid head around the corner. I want to punch it in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I'd say I think I agree with you. Uh, hopefully we're wrong because we don't want to see yeah. this team lose to LAFC at all. Any no, game. I mean, no, I, I want to make it clear, too, that <clears throat> uh, just because uh, I'm predicting Galaxy's going to lose this game and Brian, you know, saying, uh, what, they expect the draw, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that we want to see Galaxy lose. Obviously, you know, this is the team that, you know, we, we support and we want to see them win and we will celebrate every goal if they end up winning the game. But uh, if they lose, it won't be a, it won't be a shock. 
uh, like I said, I maybe for a lot of people that you know look at the numbers and see the results so far, they they're, they're saying there's no way Galaxy can lose this game. But that's why you play the games, right? Yep. You don't play the games on paper. You don't play them in like in a video game. I mean, you could, right? But it's not the same, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like you go, you know, you have the athletes go out there, and on any given day, any team can beat anybody, mm-hmm. except San Marino. You know, they never win. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, right. The worst national team in history. What a bunch of bums! They lost the same kid to Nevis. I bet twice. you San Marino can beat La Selecta. <laughs> I'll say it with confidence. That team is Damn, not. Anyway, no, that's, a, that's a side man. note. That's a side note. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah. Uh, more than anything, though, uh, I just hope everybody has a really good time, yeah, uh, and uh, enjoy this game because whether you're a Galaxy fan or you cheer for LAFC, you know, just have a good time. Uh, you know, and if you if you want to drink, go ahead and drink, but drink responsibly. Uh, be mindful, you know, of not uh, you know hitting anybody or getting violent because that's not going to do anything for anybody. Uh, do you think that you getting into a fight is going to affect the score line? No, it isn't. Do you think the players care if you get into a fight? Probably not. Uh, but if you're at the stadium, don't throw any stuff on the field. Uh, respect, you know, the the players. And if you get into a situation where maybe you know, somebody's trying to rope you into a fight, just walk away and live to see another day because you never know. You never know. Yeah. But anyway, anyone enjoy this weekend. And remember, WrestleMania is going to be going on. Yes. On Saturday. It's going to be beautiful. I love it. Have WrestleMania on one TV and you know, the the on the other. yeah, that's the same thing I'm about to do. I'm just gonna stay here and have my laptop on TV going, so I might as well do that. And to add on to what Edgar had said, uh, yeah, protect each other too. Um, uh, you don't have to start things, but protect each other and have each other's back. Go to the restroom in groups and shout out to all the rolled road warriors that are gonna go, uh, so far away to play. <laughs> one LAFC. Uh, so yeah, uh, what Edgar said, have fun, protect yourselves. Da, 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 da. All right, Edgar. Uh, I think that does it for us tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's it's actually we're recording this at Nag After Dark. It's very late. Nag after dark. <laughs> and as you can see, my eyes are like chingy because <laughs> I am very sleepy. <laughs> very but when tired. it comes to talking about this topic, uh, I will always get up just like the team gets up to play this shit. So um, where can they find you, Edgar? Yeah, you guys can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram as Edgar Nags. And although I'm not going to name names, I want to thank the, the the fellas that did contribute to this uh, LAFC scouting report. I really appreciate the fact that you guys have responded and gave me some good, um, honest information. So um, this is this is what we want to do for you. You know, I know we're all feelings on facts, but we also want to make sure that you have a so good idea of what's going on right so you understand what's at stake and when you see what's at stake it makes things even more interesting right it's like when you go to a movie things don't just happen and you're like what the hell just happened you have an idea of, you know, who the protagonist and the antagonist and you put certain stake into something so seeing the kind of angst that LAFC is bringing to this game and seeing Galaxy's urgency to maintain this hot start those are two things that are going to collide on Saturday we're going to see something funny happen yeah, I'm sorry, not funny. Something fantastic. Yeah, I think match of the week again. Let's go. Yeah, uh, yeah hell yeah. But where can they find you? <laughs> well, I said Twitter and Instagram as Edgar Nags. Oh, you did. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, right. sir. Well, you can find me. What about as... Chiyasu? I'm... Oh no, he's not here right now. <laughs> Chiyasu's <laughs> muted right now. Now I'm just waiting. He's not <laughs> here <today. laughs> Yeah. You can find me as Chavez Hall. Pretty simple. <laughs> Chavez Hall. <laughs> Love you, Chewy. Uh, you can find me as Bryant Nags on Instagram and X slash Twitter. And I'll be home watching the game. Um, stay tuned for the weekend live show. Um, we'll go more into detail about the new Colombian center back we have. Hopefully we have more on Jalen's injury. And hopefully we are not too sad to talk about the game. <laughs> and hopefully we'll, we'll, we will have a uh... We will be talking about how Cody finished the story. Maybe ah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm still all bloodline, but right now we're only doing the acknowledgement of our chef, Chef Coons, baby. Yeah, our tribal <laughs> chef. Yeah, from myself, Bryant, and my co host, Edgar, we are out of here. Once again, thank you, everybody. And as usual, and as always, keep on nagging. All right, there it is. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, shout out Alessandra. You use your birthday till you're turning 35. How the fuck is he younger than me? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <That> <laughs> I see makes... that you're getting old, man. That makes no sense. All right, happy birthday, Alessandra. Shout out. All right. Keep on nagging. <laughs>